It is Monday, August 31st. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? Protesters in Portland clashed with a pro-Trump truck caravan in a night of violence that left one right-wing militia member dead. Meanwhile, the U.S. passes 6 million coronavirus cases and California becomes the first U.S. state to hit 700,000. California's infection rates are falling, though, but other states with smaller populations continue to spike. And lastly, President Trump has made a big deal about his payroll tax deferrals, but new data shows that when the tax man does come knocking in 2021, workers are going to get slammed. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie, and these are the stories you need to know. One person was shot dead during a chaotic night of protests in Portland, Oregon on Saturday. The circumstances around the shooting are still unclear. It happened near a parking garage away from the main protests. The victim was wearing a hat with the logo of a Patriot Prayer, far-right militia that is squared off with Black Lives Matter protesters and other anti-fascists in Portland. Portland police say they're trying to find out who was responsible for the shooting, but released no information yet. Earlier in the night, a huge convoy of Trump supporters drove into the city, largely in pickup trucks, streaming Trump 2020 and thin blue line flags. They then proceeded to antagonize Black Lives Matter protesters in the city, spraying mace and shooting them with paintballs. Far-right counter-protesters have attacked protesters in Portland repeatedly in the past weeks, brandishing or firing guns on multiple occasions. Any of that nuance is sure to be stripped from the conversation, particularly after the politically charged shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin last week. President Trump has used the incident to double down on his fascist rhetoric and enable more far-right escalation, saying that, quote, the people of Portland won't put up with no safety any longer, end quote, criticizing Portland's embattled mayor, Ted Wheeler. Meanwhile, President Trump will be heading to Kenosha, Wisconsin, Monday today. What he'll say, I guess we'll find out. The United States passed 6 million confirmed coronavirus cases on Sunday, This according to the New York Times. California now rules the bleak coronavirus charts with 700,000 confirmed cases in the state. However, that number belies a slightly more positive story for the state. The infection rate is falling. And of course, California's massive population always means it's going to have more cases than most. Other states are still struggling, however. Louisiana has the highest number of cases per 100,000 people in the country, with over 3,100, this according to the Times. Outbreaks continue to spread, especially in schools and universities that are resumed in-person classes. But recent data shows that the rate of infections might be slowing slightly. New daily cases have been going down since the end of July. The next worry is how quickly and how safely we'll be able to get a vaccine. The FDA commissioner recently said his agency might be willing to approve a vaccine before phase three human trials have been completed, which is obviously a risk. It's one that could save the lives if the vaccine works, but is also being pushed heavily by the Trump administration, which is desperate to get some kind of solution on the table before the election. As we know from Trump's handling of the pandemic, human life matters far less than political capital. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin, that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code Majority at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code Majority at JustCoffee.coop. President Trump made a big deal about suspending payroll taxes during the height of the pandemic, meaning that workers got to skip at least one regular subtraction from their take-home wage. But instead of abolishing the tax, Trump just deferred it. New data confirms that when we have to pay that tax back retroactively, things are going to be bleak. Treasury Department on Friday indicated that employers would be on the hook to pay back the postponed payroll taxes in 2021, meaning that they'd be taking even more out of workers' paychecks than they would have normally. What Trump's deferrals are doing, then, is giving a short-term boost to paychecks, which will certainly be appreciated by some, at least until it's owed in a year. After the election, of course. To make matters worse, guess what payroll taxes usually fund? So in one move, Trump is putting stress on the budgets of essential services for just a temporary relief to workers. If Trump gets reelected and decides to essentially forgive the tax, 
It will give most workers a bit of a bump in take-home pay. However, it will come at the cost of their retirement funds and their Medicare. Since Republicans have been looking to gut those programs for years, this seems like the perfect plan to add a whole lot more uncertainty to the mix. And now for some quicker quickies. Quicker quickie. Representative Steve Scalise sank to a new low on Sunday, if you can believe it, publishing a doctored video that manipulated the words said by ALS-afflicted health care advocate A.D. Barkin. The footage Barkin appears to ask Biden to redirect funding for police to health care. In reality, Barkin, who uses a digital voice box because of his ALS, didn't say the words for police. Scalise just added them to fit his twisted narrative. Arizona State University's college Republicans have become one of the first formal political groups to throw their lot all in behind Kenosha murderer Kyle Rittenhouse, holding a fundraiser for him and telling a newspaper journalist who called that they, quote, do not speak to journalists with pronouns on their Twitter page, end quote. Classy group of young people, clearly. Small number of U.S. troops doing something in Syria this week were injured in a skirmish with Russian forces. This happened allegedly after the two groups crashed their vehicles into one another. U.S. officials said there wasn't any actual shooting, but still, yikes. Finally, the director of National Intelligence Office informed the Senate and House that it would no longer be doing in-person briefings related to election security, thus limiting Congress's ability to ask any questions of the people running the security for the November election, striking yet another blow to transparency overall. Not a great sign. Quicker. Quickie. That's all for the AM Quickie. We're back live today on the Majority Report at noon. And then, of course, later as a podcast. See you then.